just what you eat. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord, Jesus Christ. And we as God's people need to be careful. We need to be careful. And the reason why I'm talking this way is because I'm laying the foundation for tomorrow morning's message and tomorrow afternoon's message. But there are four lines we can cross where our eternity is jeopardized or even changed forever. What? You sure, sir? Yeah. The unpardonable sin in Mark 3, 22 and 30. You don't need to turn to it, just write it down. What do you mean the unpardonable sin? Well, you can cross that line of the unpardonable sin. Well, what is the unpardonable sin? Well, technically Jesus was healing people in, in, in Israel and the leader says, you know what, Jesus? You're doing those works by the powers of Beelzebub. So you know what? Jesus says, listen, you can talk about me and you'll be forgiven. But if you talk about the Holy Ghost, you won't be forgiven in this world, neither in the world to come. In other words, if someone is doing the work of God and you attribute that work to the work of Satan, watch it! <clears throat> if someone is being used by the Holy Ghost, you better not say that person is being used by the devil because they say, then you're saying that the devil, that, that, that the Holy Ghost does devil work. Second, the unspoken line, Hebrews chapter 6, reading verse 1 to 6. I've seen this time and time again. There is a line where you can cross, where you can crucify the Son of God afresh. What are you talking about, son? Well, there's things in Hebrews chapter 6 where it says you can partake of the Holy Ghost. You're seeing the grace of the love of God. You're seeing the powers of the world to come. And to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify the Son of God afresh. The Apostle Paul says, you know what? They crucified Jesus afresh. That don't mean they can't be saved. But let me tell you something. I've seen many a men hit this line when I first came into the church. You know what happened? They wanted to work for the Lord. They wanted to preach for Jesus. But you know what? And in, 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 in language, which some of you may understand, a woman chop off him locks. <laughs> you know what that means? Somehow before the holy angels who look after them. You know, every one of us has a holy angel watching over us, protecting us. Every one of us has a guardian angel watching over us right now. And all the guardian angel doing is just writing, writing, and he's writing. But you know what? There's angels that protect you from the powers of darkness. So Satan can't get the victory over you and kill you on your way home from here. And it was angels that brought you here, bless the Lord, and it's angels was going to bring you home. Amen. And let me tell you something, if you do not know, when you do your dirt in darkness, you think only you and the person who you're doing it with is there? No, no, no. God has angels there to protect you because you know why? Satan would love to kill you while you're in the act. And Apostle Paul is saying there is a line we can cross that if we do it, we will never be able to be used again in this world. You have to sit at the back of the church and just say amen once in a while. There's another line, the silent principle. John 5 verse 14. Jesus talks about him healing people. He says, listen, sin no more. At least the worst thing come upon thee. In other words, Jesus is saying, you see the sin will cause you to get sick? You better stop it. Because if you carry on with doing those actions that made you sick, the, the second time the sin that, that sickness come, it's going to be worse than the first. Saying that meaning this, if you have, say, should I say, forgive me if anybody has it, but if you have cancer and you get rid of it the first time, but you don't give up the sins what cause, or the lifestyle what cause the sickness, when that cancer come back, it ain't coming back in the organ, it's coming back in your bones. Even worse. And Jesus tells us, listen, be careful, there's a silent principle. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. But there's one more. And it's not proven me wrong yet. It's the line of procrastination. In Acts 24, 25, what are you talking about? Well, the apostle Paul was preaching to Felix. And Felix trembled. Because the apostle Paul, he preached on righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. And Felix was this emperor and he trembled at the word of the living God. And you know what he said? <laughs> when I've got a little bit more time, I'm gonna to listen to you again. 
when there's a more convenient season, when I've got more time, I'll spend some time and hear this Christianity again. I bet you never heard it again. Be careful how we treat truth and light from God. And this weekend's going to change a lot of our lives. And you're going to hear some things that are going to make your life go upside down. But be careful how you treat truth. Why? Because God is not a puppet having strings where we regulate how he blesses us and how he doesn't bless us. God is not a puppet. Treat him with the maximum of respect. Not only that, God does not have to repeat himself. When God tells you something once, he does not have to tell you again. And that is the thing about it. Some of us have been hearing some of these truths time and time and time again. And many of us have not changed our life yet and we are sick. We're not just sick physically, we're sick mentally. And we procrastinate, we procrastinate, we procrastinate until our eternity and our useful in this life is shattered. And God has given us another message again tonight. And I thank God for this message. I'll tell you that for nothing because when I was putting it together and I trembled. Because there's two sides to temperance. Because true temperance teaches us to dispense entirely with everything hurtful and to use judiciously that which is helpful. Dispense to get rid of something or someone or stop using them or it. Judiciously having, showing, or done with good judgment, or sense, or in moderation. And the Bible says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And if any man do our church, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, God himself will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple? Ye yeah. are. Too many of us are diseased and sick. Also, too many of us have ungodly tempers and our characters are not in harmony with the fruit of the Spirit. Also, too many of us cannot and will not be used by the Holy Spirit because He can't trust us, and too many of us will be lost. Because we were and still are intemperate. And in closing, I remember I was at a church. And this lady said, Evangelist, every time you preach, I feel so far from the Lord. I feel so far. And you know what? When she originally said it, I felt bad. I said, I don't want you to feel far from the Lord. I want you to feel close to him. And then the Holy Ghost said, hold on. Think about what she said. She feels far from the Lord. Why? Because what I was speaking about, she was still doing, knowing she was doing wrong. And I remember this text and I said to her, sister, the apostle Paul says in chapter 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Who are the witnesses? The patriarchs who have gone before. The pioneers of 1844. Let us lay aside, put away every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. What weight? What weight do you reckon you have in your life? It's not a sin, it's a weight. It's something in your life that stops you from being used by God. What weight 
do you have in your life? And not just that, many of us have sins in our life what stops us from being used by God. So some of us have a weight, some of us have sin, some of us have both. It so besets us, it pushes us back, pushes us back. When we try to go forward, it pushes us back. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What? You mean to tell me some of us have a race? Yes! You mean to tell me that? Hold on. Is the Lord going to keep the race open until I finish? No! What do you mean? I mean some of us will never even finish our race. When probation closed, we're still trying to give up this. When probation closed, we're still trying to give up this. When probation closed, we're still trying to stop watch television and stop watch soap opera. And you know what? You still be running when probation closed and you won't be able to finish your race. And that's what I told the lady and she just looked at me with her two eyes. Oh, look what the Apostle Paul says. Look what the Apostle Paul says. He says, I fought a good fight. <laughs> Are you fighting tonight? It's, listen, Christianity is a constant wrestle. You think you're going to get to heaven on a bed of ease? And, oh, the good Adventist, I'm going to get to heaven. Listen, being an Adventist causes activity in your life. You have a constant warfare with Satan. And those who are used by God, you can echo my sentiments. It's not easy to stand for the living God, but it's worth it. Yes. The Apostle Paul said, I fight, not just any fight, it's a good fight. But he's finished his course. He knew that he got to where he wanted to get to. And you know what he's done? You know, you could be in the church and you don't have the faith. We want to be in the church amongst God's people, but we want to fight, finish our course, and keep the faith. And I said to that sister, sister, if you think that you can keep on just putting off, putting off, and procrastinating, you know what's going to happen? Probation is going to close on you, and you're not even saved in heaven. How about you tonight? Do we dare to be a Daniel? <laughs> Philip P. Bliss in 1873, he said this, and I don't know why he said it, but I love the words. He said, standing by a purpose true, unheeding God's command. Honor them, the faithful few, all hail to Daniel's back. Do you dare to be a Daniel? Do you even dare to stand alone? Dare to have a purpose firm, but dare to make it known. Are you willing and you dare to be a Daniel? Tomorrow's message, tomorrow morning, and I can't wait to preach. The temperance of subjection. Let us pray. 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 Lovely Father and friend in heaven. First of all, we want to thank you for the privilege of being able to hear such truths this night. Lord, many of us never realize how serious temperance is, loving, lovely Heavenly Father. And we come in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we never realize that temperance can affect our health and our characters, and our usefulness in this world. 
Low temperance can even affect our salvation. And Lord, none of us want to be lost tonight. So we come to you and we just ask that you forgive us. Because we can't forgive ourselves. So we're asking you, Lord, to forgive us. Many of us know we are eating things and drinking things and doing things and watching things. Which, if you was to come with us, or if you was to be there with us, you would rebuke us. And Lord, I pray for every head bowed in this church this night. I pray that every single one of us would take temperance so serious that tonight our life is going to change forever. Lord, I pray for our homes and I pray for our husbands and I pray for our wives and I pray for our children. I pray, loving Lord, that you rebuke the powers of darkness which are lurking in some of our homes. In some of our workplaces, Lord, I pray, loving Lord, that the temptations and the trials, what we are going through, loving Lord, you'll give us power through your grace to rebuke the powers of darkness to walk in the ways of righteousness. Lord, help us to stop watching things on the television and stop listening to things on the radio. And loving Lord, that we will start having things on our plate, which is more in harmony with daring to be a Daniel. Be with Northampton Church, Lord. And I pray the sanctifying power of God will rest upon every head here. Be with our pastor, and be with his family, be with his wife, and be with his children, Lord. And give him backbone to always want to stand up for the living God. Surround him, Lord. I know Satan's after him, but I rebuke the powers of darkness. And let God's man fulfill his duty in feeding God's flock. We love you, Lord. Bring us home safely. Give us a royal escort with your holy angels. And loving Lord, bring us back in the morning where we're going to hear part two, the temperance of subjection. In other words, Lord, the way we eat and drink, Lord, it will keep our bodies in harmony with the living God. Please, Lord, sanctify us because we need it. And when all is said and done, once again, forgive us where any of us have failed thee. And we just want to tell you this night that we love you. And thank you for the Sabbath you've given us. Because this is our prayer. And this is our praise with divine thanks. In Jesus' name, let everybody 